Hello, my name is Oliverio Valcells, and we're going to explore the relationship of the Huichol culture and the art making of Gloria Granados, Reggie Casillas, and myself. Welcome. The Huichol, to preserve their culture, they express themselves in different art forms like yarn paintings, clothes, and bead objects. The main characteristics in their art are the vibrant colors and their symbols that tell stories about the traditions, rituals, and what they see in this life. This piece is called Savia, the woman who got the knowledge to cure. Here I'm making honor of the ancient Mexican tradition of the medicine plants that are all over the country and with many cultures. And also I'm inspired with the Huichol culture on the tonal contrast and the private color combinations used in the flowers from the top and the bottom of this piece. Hi, my name is Gloria Martinez Granados. I was born in Guanajuato, Mexico, and my family and I migrated to the United States when I was eight years old. In my work, I look at my culture for inspiration. I'm inspired by the Huichol art, the Wiradica art, uh, because of their expression of honoring Mother Earth, the symbols that are used for us to see our connection to Earth, to one another, to all living beings, including plants and animals, and to our connection to the sky, to the cosmos, to the universe. I often use um, clothing and jewelry to explore identity because the things that we wear can say a lot about us through the symbols as a means of expression. So I often look at the environment around me for inspiration too. Hello, my name is Reggie Casillas and I am a uh, visual artist based out of Phoenix, Arizona, born and raised. Uh, I was exposed to the arts at a uh, young age. My father is also a uh, visual artist and a lot of the influence in my work uh, comes from him. Uh, beyond uh, my father's influence, I am certainly interested in uh, culture and the Huichol culture certainly has a lot to share there. Um, what I've picked up from the Huichol culture is uh, primarily the use of color as well as uh, the use of sacred geometry which uh, just allows for there to be a connection between earth and uh, like a visual representation of the uh, solar system. Um, these things have always uh, intrigued me and uh, continue to influence the work that I create today. Hi, today we will be making a Huichol or Wiradica inspired bracelet. We will be finding inspiration in Wiradica artwork in their use of colorful symbols to give an artful expression. For this activity, we're going to be using stretchy string, different color beads, scissors, and a binder clip. To get started, uh, it could be useful for you to use a flat surface to work on. Um, so maybe a book, um, a large book that you can put on your lap or a table. Um, you can also use a piece of uh, cloth like a towel or a t-shirt folded up. That way it gives you a nice surface where your beads won't be sliding around and you'll be able to work um, much more efficiently for this project. To start off, we're going to be cutting a piece of stretchy string. You can put it around your wrist and kind of get an approximate amount 
of length that you will be needing, remember to give yourself a little extra space so that when you finish it off, you can easily tie it. Um, this is going to be approximately 10 inches long. It depends on the size of a wrist and of course we're all unique and individual so it's gonna vary for every single one of you. We're going to begin by putting down the string on our flat surface and this will allow us to have an approximate length needed for our design. So following along the string we can start to place beads in the way that we want our pattern to be made. And this is where you will find your own inspiration. How is it that you want this design to look? Is there a favorite color that you like to use? Is there a symbol in one of the beads that represents who you are? Whatever it is that you find that is unique in the beads that calls you, follow this intuition for you to create your very own design. Once you have your design laid out the way that you want it, you will grab your binder clip and clip it to one end of the tail of the string. This will help stop beads from sliding out when you begin to put them in, in the string. So through every little hole on the beads, you're going to be putting your stretchy string. You will repeat this for every single bead that you have selected for your design. Remember to follow your pattern so that your design follows the same way that you have laid it out. When you're finished stringing your beads, you can Place the strung beads around your wrist to see if it's too big or too small. This still allows you to create any edits that you might need to um, in your bracelet design. So for example, if you put too many beads on it, maybe you could take a few off if the bracelet is too big. Or if you didn't put enough of them, then you can add more. If you are happy with the way that the beads were laid out and you are ready to tie it off. You can do this by crossing the two ends of the strings in an overhand knot. You will create this overhand knot several times, two to three times, to give you a nice secure finish in your bracelet. Now you are ready to wear a very unique self-designed bracelet Hello, my name is Reggie Casillas, and today we're going to take some time to color this image of this double-headed eagle I've created here. Now, um, the materials we're going to use pretty straightforward here. It's got these uh, nice colored pencils here to my right, and it uh, looks like we've got about 1 to 11, 12-ish pencils there, uh, give or take. We'll make it work uh, regardless. Now, um, what we're going to do is we're going to color this image and we're going to try to uh, stick to uh, what the Weechel might consider as uh, traditional colors for this. Now, uh, just to explain a bit about the image, uh, this is, once again, the double-headed eagle, uh, which is a symbolic image for Tate Werika Weimari which is the mother of the sky. Uh, so this is a central figure within the culture. Uh, you know, of course, a lot of relevance to that. Um, and what we're gonna do is, as you see me uh, doing here, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and take a dark blue and just outline, uh, I mean, I guess like an inner line, 
um, and just creating a, a little bit of a uh, of a thicker uh, line. Uh, and then what what I did here was take a lighter blue and just uh, once again outline the uh, previous lines. And we're going to continue that with an even lighter blue. Uh, this is just a simple technique of using uh, gradients essentially to uh, get to a lighter color. So we're going to go from our darkest blue to our lightest blue on the uh, inner uh, side of things there. Uh, so so uh, with white being, you know, essentially the, the last color that we use just to kind of brighten up things there. Now, uh, uh, this is just uh, a suggestion. You certainly do not need to uh, go with these colors. Uh, this is just more of a traditional sense of what you might see uh, in this type of artwork of this particular symbol. Um, so once again, this is a representation of the mother of the sky. Uh, blue is constantly uh, used uh, when, uh, when uh, this image is depicted. Uh, blue in the Huichol culture is a, a representation of femininity. So uh, that's a little something there uh, you might not have known. Um, another symbol that we have at the center of the uh, double-headed uh, uh, eagle here is the, uh, the symbol for the peyote cactus. Now, uh, the peyote cactus is also, of course, uh, very important within the Huichol culture. It is uh, utilized within their religious uh, rituals. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and include that image here at the center uh, using some vibrant greens. And um, uh, we've got some nice orange and yellows at the center there uh, just to give it a, a nice uh, little bit of pop um, with some, uh, some yellow around the outside. Uh, once again, you don't need to go with these same colors. These are just the uh, traditional scents. I certainly uh, challenge you to, you know, find your own color combinations and make this work for you. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and continue on. Uh, once again here, taking the darker blue to uh, create the first lines there. Kind of just tracing the uh, the outline there. And... Um, and we're going to do that all the way around to all the areas that we want to go ahead and and fill in with blue. Uh, so so this is a uh, a violet even. I think I, I don't even think this is a a, a true uh, blue. This is more of like a purple um, color here. But that's going to work perfect. So when then what we did next was bring in that blue. Um, and this is more of a dark blue. Just a uh, building up that gradient you know so that we can get that nice soft finish within the center of the piece um, so you know feel free to take your time with this of course I've sped it up here because this did you know take a little bit of time to uh, get these all filled in um, and uh, what we have here is of course um, another lighter blue uh, just bringing in more of the uh, the the blue tones and, and uh, building on that color. Um, one other thing that I would recommend is to continue with the design. Um, you know, there's uh, a lot of empty space around the outer edges there that I've left for you. And you can certainly include your own symbols um, or, you know, something maybe, you know, that you... Uh, have found within the Weichol culture that you you like in particular, you know, go ahead and add that to your piece. Uh, one thing that is typically seen above the double-headed eagle in uh, traditional Weichol art would be uh, a sun. So you can certainly draw that in over the top there. But uh, there you have it. That's the project, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.